This is Chris Lee of Southeastern 14 here to rank the SEC's top 14 hitters as of April the 12th. And let me tell you how I put this together. I use Bill James's runs created formula per 27 outs and looked at that heavily. Uh, if you don't know who Bill James is, you can look him up. I also considered SEC stats pretty heavily. I considered ballpark, strength of schedule, all kinds of stuff. And so what I'm going to give you is not just a list of rankings according to runs created. It's going to be taking that and then taking it based on those things. And if you just want to know who the most productive guys on the team are, you can see the three sometimes four for each team scrolling across the bottom. So I'm not just going to go by the numbers, but let me get right into it rather than boring you with more stuff here. Okay, I'm going to start from the bottom, and I'm going to give you the the four guys that I really considered strong and left out. Kendall Diggs of Arkansas, Luke Mann of Missouri, Jack Moss of Texas A&M, Hunter Hines of Mississippi State were four guys I considered who didn't make the list, uh, but they all had pretty strong cases and perhaps in future rankings you'll see them there. Okay, number 14, Enrique Bradfield Jr. of Vanderbilt. On the whole for the season, Bradfield's numbers have not been in the top 14, but my goodness, in conference play, his slash line is 381, 559, and 738. He has really turned it on when it matters, and that's why he settled in at number 14 this week. Number 13, Tommy White. Tommy White, of all the players on this list, have had has had the worst year in conference play, of course, he's been hurt. He's missed some time. And he, he's, look, he's just Tommy White. He's a great hitter. And he's had a really good year on the whole when he's been healthy, creating 13.4 runs per 27 outs. And the SEC White's slash line is 326, 365, 587, which is good, but it's not near what some of the other guys on the list have for that reason. And, again, he's Tommy White. He deserves the benefit of a doubt. I put him at number 13 on our list. And also, defense isn't considered. If it were, Enrique Bradfield Jr. would zoom up the top, the top towards the top of this list, too, for that. But this is just based on hitting stuff. Okay, number 12, I've got Auburn's Bryson Ware, who in SEC play has hit 347, 407, and 755. He ranks 12th. He has far and away been Auburn's best hitter. He has created a total of 39, excuse me, 42 and a half runs on the season uh, and been very efficient at doing it. Okay, number 11, you might be surprised this guy isn't higher, but it's not just home runs. He still had a great year, but Gavin Cassis of South Carolina, who in the league is hitting 275, 473, and 625, creating 12.4 runs on the whole uh, in all games. And by the way, South Carolina has played – According to the strength of schedule computers, I look at the easiest schedule. So that factors in a little bit too. At number 10, we've got Jared Wagner of Arkansas, who in league play is hitting 286, 423, 571, and is creating 16.8 runs per 27 outs for the whole season. Uh, Wagner has played a little less than some other guys on the list. Not a lot less, but just a little bit. That factors in a little bit, too. Number nine, Gavin Dugas of LSU, who has been really good both outside the league and in the league. In the league, he's hit 269, 491, 722. He's only had 136 plate appearances. Uh, so some guys in front of him are in the, the 150s and 160s. So he gets dinged a little bit for playing time. Uh, but again, I have a lot of confidence that Gavin Dugas belongs on this list. Again, he's like Tommy White, he's Gavin Dugas. He's been a good hitter in this league for a while. He checks in at number eight. Or excuse me, number nine. Number eight, that's Jace Borfin of Arkansas, who has been really good inside the league and outside the league. He is creating 19.1 runs per 27 outs. Now, plate appearances, again, held him down a little bit. He's only had 133. All the guys in front of him have had a little bit more. He is hitting 342, 510, 474 in the league. You'd like to see the slugging go a little higher. But anytime you've got an on-base percentage north of 500 in the league, that's outstanding. Jack Caglione of Florida checks in at number seven. Probably a little surprising to people given the home runs he's hit. Uh, but in league play, he's he's been good. He, he's only got a 375 on-base percentage. That's not really great considering some of the other numbers you're seeing put up. In the league, he's hit 340, 375, 755. 
He has created for his team 50.4 runs on the year, but again, gets stinged a little bit in SEC play. One reason he doesn't walk a lot, he's got a 4% walk rate, and it's hard to pad your own base percentage, which I think is the most important stat in baseball if you don't walk a little bit more. But anyway, he's been phenomenal at everything else, and so I think he is a deserving number seven. Number six, his teammate, Wyatt Langford, who's also missed some time. If he had not, he would be a little bit higher on this list. Langford in SEC games hitting 258, 500, 613, and is creating 18.4 runs per 27 outs. Again, a good bit more productive per 27 outs than Caglione has been. That's why he gets slotted one higher. Number five, Vanderbilt's R.J. Shrek, who in SEC play has just been tearing it up to the tune of 404, 500, 851. Shrek has created 14.4 runs per 27 outs. has been just a great find for Vanderbilt in the transfer portal. He is the first guy in our top five. Next one up, Charlie Condon of LSU. And Georgia has played, according to my strength of schedule rankings, the second toughest overall schedule. Uh, so, Condon has not only put up some great numbers, he's done it against tougher competition. Uh, he in the league is hitting 341, 440, 732, and creating 18 and a half runs per 27 outs. Number three, Josh Rivera of Florida. You might be surprised to know that Josh Rivera is the top rated hitter on the Gators. According to what I've got, Rivera has been phenomenal in league play, hitting 404, 491, 766. And honestly, this is a shortstop. So you get that kind of offense from the shortstop position. You're really having a great year. I, I think Josh Rivera at the end of the year uh, probably deserves to be mentioned an SEC player of the year consideration, it, not just for the gaudy offensive numbers, but the fact he is doing it from the shortstop position. Although, Also, by the way, he's walked 15% of the time, which is excellent. Wyatt Langford, his teammate, walking 23% of the time. That's the top walk rate in our countdown. Okay, number one and two, pretty clear. Ethan Petrie of South Carolina is creating 18.2 runs per 27 outs across all games in the league. Th these numbers are unbelievable. 477, 538, and 1114. He's slugging over 1,000, guys. That's crazy. Again, the Carolina's played probably the easiest schedule, uh, but my goodness, he is raking against anybody and everybody. Carolina's fine freshman checks in at number two in our countdown of hitters. And, and number one, who else did you expect? Dylan Cruz of LSU. Cruz has created 60.2 runs uh, on the season. Nobody else in the league is over 50. Per 27 outs, that's 29 runs. Now, I, I've done this several years, and a lot of times SEC Player of the Year is creating – Eh, 11, 12, 13 runs per 27 outs. Now, look, this is an offensive-heavy environment, and so Dylan Cruz is benefiting from that, but still, 29 runs created per 27 outs is just insane. In the league, Cruz is, is hitting well, as you would expect. 488, 611, and 805, striking out just 11% of the time. Now, walking 22% of the time, again, those are pretty absurd numbers. Uh, he's got a 549 batting average on balls in play, which – some of that might be a little bit of luck, but Dylan Cruz also tends to hit the ball pretty hard, too. So, in any case, those are your top 14 hitters. Again, I don't consider defense. I think towards the end of the year, I'll do a player of the year ranking where I do consider defense. Uh, and so that would shake up the rankings a little bit. Again, Enrique Bradfield Jr. would be a guy who would move up there in that case. But I'm not quite there yet. I need to see a little more baseball give it a little bit more time. But hope you've enjoyed these hitter rankings. I'll try to do them every week. I will probably try to release some pitcher rankings on Wednesday or Thursday. Best way to get those, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button too. That helps our analytics and helps us get noticed. I'm Chris Lee of Southeastern 14 presented by Bearded Iris. Thank you for watching. We'll see you more soon with a lot more SEC baseball content.